I've been a gamer for heading towards 30 years now. I was under 10 when I got my original Nintendo Entertainment System, and over the years, many games have come and gone, and these days it's rare for a game to drag in the majority of my gaming buddies. But Valheim has been one of those games. The majority of my community picked it up, and a couple of members who aren't around very much these days also picked it up and have been playing it with us. So you have to ask yourself why. There have been plenty of these survival building games in recent years, notable ones including Ark, Rust, Seven Days to Die, and you could say, to some extent, the popularity started with Minecraft. They're all very different in their approach in some ways, and other things are very similar. So what has set Valheim apart from those games and caused this huge media furor around it and caused it to sell over 2 million copies in the space of a few weeks? Let's talk about what this game does very well. Firstly, it's got a simple start and gradually builds its complexity as you explore new biomes, which means you're never thrown in at the deep end, which is beneficial for the people who've not played these games before. Exploration is a big part of the game, but there's no rush to explore. You can take it at your own pace. A simple reason for this is the lack of a starvation mechanic. Yes, eating food increases health and stamina, etc., but you don't die due to a lack of it. Removing that stress means you can take things a bit slow when you want to. You can focus on building a base, for example. Equally, the game does reward you for the exploration. New areas have new materials, which lead to new recipes. So there's a reason to seek out these new lands. This includes better food, which further boosts your stats and thus help you further in that exploration. And the further you go with this, the more complex the recipes become. Sailing is another part of the exploration, which I feel has been done really well in Valheim. Wind direction plays a big role as you would imagine, however, generally sailing is very intuitive. They've avoided making it overly complex, which means you can do it alone, and generally it's a fairly painless experience. Yes, you can beach and get stuck on things, but you can push your boats around when you get out of them. Another set of mechanics that's been really well done are the building mechanics. Again, very intuitive, bits snap together. It's not just this block-based system you get in a lot of games. There's a better variety of walls and supports, etc. to work with, and the way it's designed means the less artistic among us can still design very impressive buildings. More than one person has told me this is the first time they've been impressed or pleased with their efforts of building in one of these games. Another really good feature to the building is that as you place pieces, they have a colour assigned to them to show if they're being properly supported, because the game does have gravity, so green means it's fine, Red means it might fall down, and if it does fall down, it will tell you that it was improperly placed. So I found that a really good system. Now, thinking about the characters and multiplayer and things like that, another nice feature is PvP is optional. There's an on and off button in the characters menu, and that's great. It gives you the option to join multiplayer servers without the fear of being killed by people. Of course, it doesn't account for hackers and things, but no game can guarantee against that. The other nice thing about the characters is you can move your character from single player to multiplayer and they're constant. So you can keep your inventory, you keep your stats, you keep your levels. And this is really helpful if you're a new player joining an established multiplayer server where the resources in the initial starting area have been wiped out. You can go into your single player and get those resources and advance yourself there if you want. Equally, I do feel that's something that's a negative for the game. If the server has already been populated and the resources have been used or the little dungeons have been cleared, the dungeons in particular don't respawn. And that means anyone joining the server can't get a benefit from those ones near the starting area. And it might be more difficult for them to get further afield. So part of me would like to see them add a feature that you can set on the server settings to respawn those dungeons. The mix between harsh mechanics and forgiving mechanics is another area they've achieved a really good balance. So let's talk about a few of those. Firstly, stamina management can be brutal at times and it will drop fast in a fight. Or you can get caught out in the middle of mining and then something comes and attacks you and you can't run away. Which leads well onto the point that when you die you drop everything. Everything drops on the ground and you respawn at your bed or your spawn point. Which could be the other side of the map. 
which means you might have to build an entirely new ship to get back to where you were, and yes, that has happened to me. And it's not just mobs that will kill you, there's fall damage, trees can fall and crush you, and you can drown. And dying later in the game also incurs more significant penalties, as you can lose skill levels, so that's something you should be aware of. But it has a lot of more forgiving mechanics. For example, repairs are free. They're completely free for items and buildings, so while your items can break in a fight, which is devastating in that situation, you can at least head to a workstation and repair them. And as mentioned earlier, there's no starvation. Sustenance is a significant benefit and you will need it to explore, but not having it won't kill you. Progression is another area which is important in these games. And it's a really important factor when you're playing multiplayer and you have a group of friends and people can play for different amounts of time. The nice thing about Valheim is I've never felt other people were too far ahead of me to play with them or go exploring with them. It doesn't feel like I'm a level 10 noob being carried by a level 100 pro. I can still get involved in the fights, etc. The jump between techs and areas isn't so huge. I feel totally helpless. Yes, it's harder, but it doesn't put a complete stop to the experience of enjoying the game with your friends if they've been playing for 20, 30, 40 hours more than you. Last thing I want to touch on in terms of a good and a bad thing, I suppose, is graphics. Many games have proven in recent times that up-to-date super-duper graphics aren't everything. And as noted in my live streams of Valheim, the graphics are more basic, but damn does the game look good at times. From weather effects to huge crashing waves, to the amazing sky effects and the light effects, the game really does look beautiful at times. It also makes the game more accessible to those who might not have the beefiest rigs. And let's be honest, right now with the mess that they're in with the latest graphics card launches and the fact you just can't get them, this is a good thing. There's a couple of areas in the game that I feel still need a little bit of work. The tutorial system. It's a really good start and I like the idea that the big bird comes and talks to you and things like that. But I worry that it doesn't give you enough information and leaves you to your own devices a bit too much for new people coming into the game. Equally, I don't like to be spoon-fed, but I'm not new to this genre. Everybody has a different feeling on that. So I kind of want there to be an adjustment to that system, I think, so that newer people can still get into it. The second thing is it's early access, so there's plenty of the game to flesh out still. But compared to a lot of early access releases, there's already a lot there. And the dev team have outlined their plans for the future, and it all looks very sensible. They haven't got really carried away. And having Coffee Stain on board, I think, is a good thing. In conclusion, my mind goes back to someone popping into my stream and asking my thoughts about the game quite early on. And at the time, I was giving really good vibes, but I wasn't confident enough to say, go buy it. We're a week on from that now, and I'm confident enough to say, go buy this game. It's very likely going to increase in price as time goes on, as most of these games do. And frankly, right now you're getting a bargain, because most of my friends have put well over 80 hours into this game so far. And that's a lot more than some AAA titles, which cost a lot more. I think so far I've put well over 30 hours into this game, and there's still a lot more for me to explore. And I'm still really enjoying it, and I feel like I want to explore more. And that, for me, is a really good sign. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, please leave me some feedback down below. I appreciate both the negative and positive feedback. And please also discuss the game yourselves. Tell me why you think it's doing so well, and the bits of the game you enjoy and the bits of the game you don't enjoy. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend.